What's up guys? Uh, today we have another player spotlight. This time we have Yasser Elid. I'll put his, uh, he's actually a content creator, Canadian content creator as well. Um, so I'll link his Twitch in the uh, the description and his Twitter if you want to follow, give him a follow there. Yasser Elid, a uh, very skilled player and he's he has a very interesting take on uh, a, a team that I, I used to play, the original Triple Bird team, right? We had Surfetch, we had Manibuzz, and we had not Azumarill, we had, um, I believe, Noctowl in there. So, very clever replacement from Yasser Elite. He's been playing this team for quite a while now. Um, and yeah, let's take a look at his, this was his run to legend a couple of weeks back. So, um, very, very high level plays. This uh, 3062 would no longer only or be 226 in the leaderboard. Uh, so, yeah, this did happen a while ago, which makes it even more impressive. Even more impressive, in my opinion. Hopefully Yasser's listening to this. His ego's already a little bit too big. Uh, we're going to see Jellicent lead. Uh, interesting lead for Surfetch here. I actually haven't taken a look at these games yet, so very excited to see them for the first time as well. And he decides to go for the Night Slash. Kind of, I guess, ex expecting a shield, I guess, and just going for the, the boost here. Uh, but unfortunately, he does not get the shield. Also, through after the Bubble Beam, but I think he realized uh, that was a little bit of a mistake there too. Actually, yeah, I can see his camera um, while while he's playing these games, so I can tell ex exactly what he's thinking. He's not very happy with the fact that uh, he uh, he's he's getting bubble beams off this, but that's okay. He has the uh, attack boost now. That's a little bit of luck he needed. Doesn't matter if you get bubble beam, if you get that night slash boost, and he just keeps fishing for it. And obviously, Surfetch outpaces Jellicent here, so gonna be able to get to the all-important Night Slash, and in comes Skarmory. Decides to stay in favoring alignment. Remember, this is no longer really an ABB team. This Mana Buzz, still a very good safe swap, but um, doesn't draw all the same counters as Azumarill. So, he is uh, clearly predicting, hopefully, a Pokemon on the back that is weak to Azumarill. A lot of Pokemon are weak to Azumarill in general. You see the, the Jellicent in the front, they already have that one the one answer for Azu, and yeah, there's the Obscune coming in. Correct prediction from Yasser, and yeah, there's the the top, the top left being used. Guessing that Goon did not have Gunk Shot at all. Yeah, so this was, this was the end of a uh, set, getting him to 29.44, and now we're I think we're gonna get to see 10 more games. I'm assuming that uh, that take him to to Legend. So, favorable lead and into Metacham, immediate switch into um, Mandibuzz. Interesting, I probably would have went into Azumarill considering it is running play rough. Uh, and that's a very, very solid matchup, whereas the, the Mandibuzz Metacham matchup is, is a lot more dicey. But I think what Yasser is trying to do here is kind of sacrifice his Mandibuzz. So that his, his two backline Pokemon actually have a really good matchup versus G-Fisk. So, even though potentially the better counter, or no, obviously the better counter to Metacham is, is this Azumarill. I think it's it's a more of a, a play to kind of get rid of his, his weakest link here. And he's going to be able to get to this charge move. Unfortunately, this Metacham is going to decide on whether or not he gets switch. Yeah, this Metacham will be able to, to deny switch advantage here. Uh, but like we mentioned earlier, this might not be... Too big of a deal. It all depends on uh, what is in the back. The G-Fist doesn't really have anywhere to go. And it's a Venusaur. So, oops. Um, yeah, this might be one of those games where if, uh, <laughs> if Metacham was brought in, or Azu was brought against the Metacham, Manibuzz would still be available for this Venusaur. And it would have been a very hard Rock, Paper, Scissors counter game. But instead... They, uh, they make a catch on Stunfisk, which, interestingly enough, might have given this game back to, to Yasser. Uh, so, great catch by Yasser here to kind of uh, pull back this lead a little bit. Catching the Rock Slide is actually a very big deal, especially when you're not running uh, the Hydro Pump on Azu. Taking two Earthquakes would have been pretty awful. Uh, but at this point, there's just a Venusaur. And... Yasser needs to get some charge moves here to be able to to be able to take it out. Yeah, he's not gonna quite get to an ice beam. Perhaps throwing a little bit too early, but it is all right. He's get he's gonna get to the ice beam before that Venusaur gets to a frenzy plant. And either way, even if that Venusaur had to throw out the Azumarill, 
you got the surf fetch in the back with a full move. Uh, you just need to get to two moves to win win that one. But all right, this next game we have an Azumarill versus surf fetch. This is it's all right. He uh, he does have to stay in though, right? Because the um, the mana bus. Great charge move timing, throwing um, the the right time so that they don't get any extra or only one extra turn through. Um, and Surfetch does win the two shield here, but you do have to take it to two shields. You can't just play the one shield. Um, ooh, might be able to with play rough. And, uh, this Azumarill doesn't look like it has Ice Beam. But yeah, they're obviously going to force the issue, see what this, this Azu wants to do. And throwing yet again uh, to force this second shield or just win the one shield here. Yeah, you're going to force the second shield. His opponent wants to play shields down. At this point, it's... Honestly, his team is quite good with shields down as well. But in comes Deoxys, and we're going to see this Night Slash go off. Um, as the backline isn't that that great against it, you're going to take a decent amount of damage from charge moves on either Pokemon. But obviously, Mandibuzz is going to be able to take out Deoxys, no problem. Yeah, yes, you're not going to mess around, not going to elect to uh, farm up a little bit more, just probably a little bit scared of the energy that this Deoxys could get. Actually, the foul play doesn't even KO, so... Um, well played. And Mandibuzz is going to counter Azu as well. Going to be able to take out this Azumarill before it deals too much more damage, so it'll come down to all what's in the back, and this is a, this is a very good scenario. At this point, um, I think if the switch timer is up, you could just switch into Azu, and the opponent would just leave. No, he's going to BM catch <laughs> oh my god yeah sir what a troll holy cow uh but yeah instead of going into the azu wait are you serious yeah sir holy cow this is the this is the biggest bm i think i've ever seen this poor opponent thinking that um that he's gonna be able to get out of this this match for the next couple minutes no you must think that there's something really weak to umbreon in the back and in fact going for the uh foul the foul plays over the aerial aces as well Oh my god. Yeah, I definitely should have edited this part out. Because, yeah, Azumarill is going to have a very solid matchup against a half-health Umbreon. Yeah, there we go. This is probably what should have happened about a minute and a half ago. This is probably what should have happened about a minute and a half ago. Well, this is Yasser. Yeah, if you can make the BM place, you're going to make the BM place. This next game, we have uh, My Secure. So playing a lot of legend players, obviously right at that legend border. We have Surfetch and Umbreon, great lead. Uh, but we'll see how this plays out. There's a little bit of a desync at the beginning there too. Yeah. So this matchup, uh, very strong for Surfetch. You can tank a last resort. It deals quite a bit of damage. Umbreon is just so tanky. Uh, but unfortunately, you can't farm all the way down either. Otherwise, they're going to they're gonna get to another charge move, and you're going to have to spend a shield. So um, they actually do let it go down, which is is interesting because it kind of suggests that they don't have a better counter for Surfesh in the back, and they do come in with the Cherim, which is very interesting, and try to farm all the way down too. So uh, in this case, Yasser's letting his Surfesh go down because he has the hard counter in Mandibus. And he's got the soft counter in, in or sorry, something that's very counter. Oh my! Wait, what? Is this a paid actor? Oh, there's a bill roll in the back. Okay, yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this game, this game is over. Obviously, the goal is not to throw solar beams into one HP surfetched and hyper beam. Oh my! Okay, so I I feel like most runs to legend don't don't include this uh th this this level of uh of trolling, but uh, but it is what it is. Wow, I didn't realize Billbrel even even got hyper beam, but a stab hyper beam. You can see how much damage that did to Azumarill. That's insane. Another hyper beam too. <laughs> well, this game was not nearly o as over as I thought it was, but uh, <laughs> Yasser's gonna be able to to pull this one through as well yeah a little bit of a troll team i guess this is when 
a lot of the earlier people were, were hitting legend right so people are just excited to be able to mess around instead of playing those teams that they've been playing for uh for seasons for seasons on end oops oh i don't know why i skipped around like that next game we have meganium lead so once again one of those uh this is now a balanced team right you can't really switch out of this and unfortunately you're gonna have to shield everything against meganium it looks like yasser is going to pretend to have brave bird and we'll see if he grabs a shield here with this night slash no his opponent does not care and he's going to get this other nice slash. right uh surfesh outpaces meganium just by a little bit and yeah he's going to have to end up going down two shields switch advantage is pretty important for this team just because azumarill and uh Manibus do have quite separate matchups and in comes the wigglytuff so yeah, good thing he uh, he won switch advantage here. You cannot have your Mandibuzz going against the Wigglytuff. You really do have to have your Azumarill in this situation. But even so, this isn't a very strong matchup, especially with the shield up for Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff is going to be able to do a lot of damage. And a good fast move to Nile by Yasser there. Yeah, throw that Ice Beam, get the shields. And unfortunately, this play rough is going to really, really hurt. So, uh, luckily, an Ice Beam will still be enough to take it down, and it's all going to come down to what's in the back. And unfortunately, it's a Glaring Stunfisk. So, this is not a great situation. Yasser tries to go for the Rock Slide catch onto the Mandibus to try and uh, allow his uh, Azumarill to get to a move later. But his opponent doesn't throw right away. Uh, if you remember previous videos, I've talked about the Mandibus versus G Fisk matchup. It's actually much closer than you would think. Gfist can't really come out of this matchup with that much extra energy. It might be a little bit different now that uh, Yeser failed to catch. Um, but these foul plays, they do add up. And Gfist is not really capable of mud shotting down in this case. But this Gfist does have to get to two rock slides. All right, because it's going to need a rock slide to take out the mana buzz. It's going to need a rock slide to take out the Azumarill. Uh, and uh, good energy management by Yasser's opponent here. That was, that was very well played, actually. Making sure they had exactly the right amount of energy to be able to take out both Pokemon and not falling for that catch. See, next game, we see a Lickitung lead. This is a pretty solid lead. And they go right into Metacham. And this time, we see the Azumarill switch in. So, no more messing around. Yasser's learned his lesson from uh, losing Switch. Uh, by switching the Mandibuzz. And he's just gonna he's gonna go for the Ice Beam here. Normally it's obviously play rough is a, a pretty safe play here, but because I think his opponent power up punch, he was thinking that his opponent might try and play the two shield against Azumarill with um with some power up punches there. But in general, I think I, I think if you just go play rough, straight play rough, you just win win this matchup regardless of baits or power up punches or or anything in the two shield. And we'll see if Yasser's counting. He's going to throw another shield here. It is a psychic. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, Azumarill did need to spend an extra shield to, to beat the Lickitung there. But that's what happens when you bait sometimes, right? And that's why, uh, I, if you've seen my gameplay, I do favor not baiting at all. And we're going to see Yasser actually preserve his Azumarill. Uh, just because the two remaining Pokemon have a very good matchup versus Lickitung. So this isn't like Vigoroth, where Vigoroth does beat Mandibuzz. Uh, counter is neutral, whereas Lick is resisted. And that's that's the big difference maker here. It's it's all about the charge moves for Lickitung. And Body Slam just does not hit hard enough off of Lickitung's attack stat to be able to win this matchup. Yeah, we're going to see this uh, play come out. And it's going to create a pretty good farm down scenario too. Uh, surprising that they're not switching out of this Lickitung matchup at all. They must have a good answer for the Surfetched. And yeah, out comes Tropius. So this is going to be really, really tough. This is not a Pokemon that Surfetched or Azumarill wants to see. Actually, this would be an extremely hard lead for this team would be, uh, be that Tropius lead. Because you can't even switch out of it either. Um, and Yasser tries to catch with Azumarill and does not quite get the catch. So this is going to be a pretty tough game. Um, 
electing to let this surfetch go down sorry this uh, mana buzz go down and go into a surfetch and hopefully get to two charge moves here to be able to take out this tropius so it'll be very close Surfetch does up pace. Yasser gets the fast move to not off, which I think he needs to do instead of the timing in this case. Oh, and he gets the boost, but unfortunately, not. it's not going to be enough. Tropius is just going to outpace. Uh, the failed catch on the Azrael, I think, was the nail in the coffin there. Um, but it's still going to be a 3 out of 5, right? Pushing Yasser all that little bit closer to Legend, and we'll see if he can get there in this uh this next set or if it's going to take a little bit more uh swampert lead this lead versus surfetch isn't all that great he's going to go for the night slash just to get try and uh, get a shot at the boost here uh which he doesn't get but he does grab the shields the problem was is uh swampert while it will get one shot by the leaf blade does outpace surfetched so you do have to match shields if not spend more and he's gonna be able to get this Night Slash off and easy. Yeah, his opponent is smart to not shield there as he's able to counter down. So we see the Skarmory come in and just because both of his back line can handle it, we're gonna see the switch up to preserve the, the Surfetched. Potentially Yasser also calling the fact that there would be a G Fisk in the back. But uh, I, I'm not 100% positive about that. You see the Swampert come out in the lead. You're going to assume there's a Skarmory in the back at the very least. The third is kind of up in the air as far as uh, what fills out that core. Yeah, so Surfetch, sorry, Mandibuzz, uh, G Fisk matchup, not nearly as bad as you might think. As uh, Yasser is actually going to try and get some farm in and actually snipe that G-Fisk before it's able to do anything else. Uh, this Surfetched obviously can deal quite a bit of damage to the Skarmory. The counters are hitting for neutral. And uh, so is Night Slash. But Skarmory, just because Surfetched is so squishy, is going to be able to farm all the way down. Yeah. There we go. And bring this energy into another Pokemon. But I think uh, there's too much of an advantage here with that Azumarill, with that... Uh, Amanda buzz for uh, for the game to swing back the other way next match up here yet another swampert lead this is shadow swampert this is a little bit better right since shields are um going to be thrown out more often uh hydro cannon is going to one shot anyways or essentially one shot anyways um so it really is about uh being able to just counter down that swampert a little bit better uh, Yasser is going to counter switch to the Sableye, or sorry, counter switch to the Sableye into his Mandibuzz, saving a little bit of energy on his Surfetch. He's got that, uh, I think, almost two moves, uh, which is great. Uh, obviously, the Mandibuzz matchup versus Sableye is pretty dominant. You can tank a return pretty easily, um, but because of the late switch, his opponent is maybe going to be able to threaten to win switch or get another shield. So. We'll see if they actually are at the return. They are. And now switch advantage is lost. So Yasser decides to go in with the Surfetched. Unfortunately, his opponent is getting moves through all the time. And um, instead of going in with the Azu. And now he's going to come in with the Azu. Swampert's going to come out. This is not a great situation. But he should either be able to get a shield with his Ice Beam. Uh, which, which he will. Um, but the problem is this game is going to come down to baits, whether or not his opponent is going to actually throw that sludge wave instead of, um, just baiting with the hydro cannon. So luckily the bait was called correctly. It was a, or sorry, the non bait was called correctly and his opponent still throws the hydro cannon. So pretty big mistake. This allows Yasser to farm up a little bit more on the swampert. Get it out of the way there with an ice beam and be able to deal some Decent damage to the Skarmory. So now the Skarmory is in a pretty tough position. It needs to Brave Bird, or it probably wants to Brave Bird to take out this Azu. But uh, if it does, it's going to debuff itself and take quite a bit of damage from the Surfetched. So Yasser decides to switch. Doesn't think he can make it to that Ice Beam on his Azumarill versus the Skarmory. And he's going to try and get to these two Night Slashes. So perfectly calculated by Yasser. Um, 
exact like actually turn precise able to get to that uh night slash and there's the reward boost right there next game against master red we're gonna see a jealous and lead we just, we've already seen one of these before the video we kind of know how this one goes you can win i think is the two shield as well so once again yasser decides to throw after the bubble beam uh very interesting choice this is Oh my god, it is actually a bubble beam too. I'm not really sure why, but at least this time he's throwing the leaf blade. This will hit a little bit harder. Yeah, in this case, I feel like he could go for the night slash. Because the night slash should be able to KO at this point. But it would be close. Maybe be able to regain a little bit of that... Um, what do you call it? A little bit of that energy. Yeah, so great fast move timing, or sorry, charge move timing again by Yasser. This is the way you have to play this matchup, otherwise uh, you might get outpaced. But his opponent is actually happy just taking this this energy advantage, or sorry, the the, the shield advantage um, as opposed to switch. And Alola Ninetales is going to come in. Uh, interesting choice. It's going to farm all the way down, uh, but take a ton of damage. And luckily Azu resists almost everything that Alola Ninetales can throw, unless it's Dazzling Gleam, which takes a ton of energy to get to. Uh, so we're going to see a Vigoroth come in as well. Uh, tough situation, actually. Vigoroth does quite well against Mandibuzz. It does decent against Azu, but Yasser yeah, so makes a good play tanking some of the counters on Azu first as they're resisted on Azu before switching to Mandibuzz and tanking the Body Slam. Or it's neutral for both of them. And obviously he doesn't want his um, Mandibuzz lined up against that Alolan Nine Ninetales in the back at all. So using the HP from this uh, this mana buzz on the Vigoroth is a uh, a bit of a a much bigger play. So he's able to get the body slam, and a second body slam comes out. This is not ideal because at this point, oh, and and it looks like there's the the swap too to catch this foul play. But um, luckily, it puts that Alola Nine Tails in farm down range. And as he's going to be able to get to this uh, Ice Beam, no problem. Yeah, so Mana Buzz would have been in, in farm down range, but luckily the switch timers would have been up anyways. It wouldn't have really mattered. At that point in the game, you're just trying to take out your po uh, your opponent's Pokemon so you can switch. This next game, we have uh, another expert leading in with Meta Champ. So this is a really bad lead. Uh, luckily both Pokemon on the back deal with it and we have the Bastion. So Medicham Bastion, probably one of the most powerful cores in the game right now. Um, if not the most powerful. So you can kind of expect this when you get the, uh, the Mandibus switch in. And unfortunately for Yasser's team, this is kind of the only place the Bastion has any play. Um, Azumarill, I guess it doesn't love to see it. Surfetch is going to love to see it. Um, Surfetch doesn't like to take the flamethrower though, is the thing. But Mana Buzz will be able to deal quite a bit of damage. And I wonder if Yasser is going to think about switching as soon as that timer is up. No, it's his, his Mana Buzz is probably a little bit too low. But at this point, the Bastion is actually low enough that we have bubble down potential as well. Uh, but he decides to go in with the Surfetch and kind of keep his back line hidden a little bit. Oh, he actually shields the flamethrower. I thought he was going to no shield, uh, given that there's a Metacham as well in the back. I thought maybe this would have been a save two shields for Azumarill game. But uh, it, it does not look like that is the case. So yes, there's going to no shield. It's an earthquake. Makes sense. No reason to bait for his opponent here. He's got two shields remaining. He just really has to take down this, this Azu. And I believe with the shield advantage, Stunfisk can probably go straight Earthquake here. Uh, but Yasser is actually trying to let this as you go down at this point. Switches into his Surfetched. And at this point, Leaf Blade is going to have to do all the damage. These counters are resisted. They don't really do anything. And a Psychic is going to be enough to take this Surfetched out. So I think Yasser really has to hope that they weren't baiting, but they were. So this looks, this is, this is starting to look like a little bit like uh, a top left situation here. Obviously you don't do that on your um, last set to legend until you're very sure. 
at its top. But yeah, this Metacham is going to get to that. Um... Oh, just a power punch. Wow. Is this Leaf Blade going to KO? Is this game actually winnable? Oh my. Holy cow. Okay. So actually, he might actually be able to win this game. Very impressive play. I can't I can't believe the Leaf Blades were enough to take out that Metacham. That was a very sweaty battle. Wow. Wow, yeah, okay, this is a, a pretty good run to Legend after all, yeah, sir. I'll, I'll give you that. Oh, and Jay's fan, so fellow t or teammate uh, for Gym Breakers, Team Canada, uh, Jay's fan. Nothing to be trifled with, he's an extremely good player. So we're going to see Scrafty come in as the counter switch to Mandibuzz here. So Scrafty has a decent matchup versus Mandibuzz. I think you can actually just power up punch all the way down if you want to. The two shield, and we'll see if Jay's fan really respects or a value switch advantage that highly against Yasser's team because this is this is all up to the Scrafty to kind of um, to choose its fate here. Because uh, these snarls, they're not gonna they're not gonna do enough to take Scrafty down. That's for sure. So this is the deciding moment. We're gonna see a shield come out. And Azumarill come in. So, great catch by Yasser. Um, I think he just really wants to stall the momentum that the Scrafty has built up. So, now Jay's fan has kind of spent a shield in that matchup. And has had to switch out that Scrafty anyways. That Scrafty's not going to be able to get a shield. Uh, you can't... Even a triple boosted foul play doesn't really do that much damage to Azumarill. But, unfortunately, Shadow Shiftry comes in. This is one of the bigger counters to... Azumarill. And wow, uh, Yasser, even with the CMP tie on the Ice Beam, elects to let his Azumarill go down. What he could have done is shield and just um, make sure that the uh, the Shiftry loses all its energy there. But instead, he's going to have to spend two shields on this Surfetch. And in comes the Hypno. Uh, he's going to switch back up. Able to throw the Foul Play here. He's got a nice Slash Stored. And a little bit on his surfetched. So this game is once again going to come straight down to the wire. Ooh, that thunder punch didn't quite KO, and there's an extra confusion there. We're going to see a night slash come out. Is this going to be enough to KO? Nope. But the resultant counters are, which is maybe even a little bit of a better situation here. This crafty does not have very much energy. Yasser with good patience being able to counter it all the way down and grab this leaf blade right on the shift tree and we're going to see another win. So this was hard counter, uh, soft counter, hard counter, but uh, Yasser is still able to pull this one off. It's one of the best battlers in the world. So is that a 5-0? I believe that was a 5-0. Um, there's the screenshot. Not as skilled as Hafu Duck getting the screenshots off mid game, but we're going to see a screenshot of that 5-0 at the end, that legend push. Congratulations, Yasser on Legend, and uh, yeah, you guys should honestly check him out on um, on uh, on Twitch. I'll put uh, I'll put that link in the description, of course, and uh, and his uh, his Twitter as well. But yeah, so I I'll still be doing a bunch of or my own videos, of course, but um, I I have no issues showcasing some of these leaderboard teams, especially if they were they're very similar to some of the teams that I've I've made in the. In the past so i have a little bit better of a read of uh how they're played and i know that they're solid teams and and don't feel bad recommending them to you guys but as as always guys um appreciate you watching yeah thanks for sorry thanks for watching